Hello and welcome to today's episode of NYSC Half Hour. I am Inkem Okwogo. National integration and unity is an essential prerequisite for the survival of a country. The National Youth Service Corps was created on 22nd May 1973 as an avenue for the reconciliation, reconstruction and rebuilding of the nation after the Nigeria Civil War. The objective of the scheme is to inculcate discipline in Nigerian youth by instilling in them a tradition of industry at work, patriotic and loyal service to Nigeria in any situation they may find themselves. We would be right back. Stay with us. If there is any institution that has served Nigeria creditably, I would say is the NYC, National Youth Service Corps, established by General Yakubu Gowan in um, 1973, just uh, some few months after the end of the Civil War. A uh, school of thought came to his mind that uh, it is better to have something that can integrate the whole nation together. And so, National Youth Service Corps was formed. That is, after graduation from the university, it was only then meant for university graduates. Then you have to serve one year compulsory service to your fatherland. And that where you will be serving does not mean area where you school or area where you were brought up. It should be an area that you have not probably gone to, so that you can know the people, know the culture of the people. And uh, uh, by knowing the culture of the people, you'll be able to integrate it with yours. And with time, we have a national culture. So that has been the, the situation. And uh, since then, the scheme has been on. Uh, the Nigeria Civil War, since it ended, has never reoccurred again. This is probably because the actors on stage today, they have passed through the, the, the youth service court scheme. I don't think an Igbo man will plan against uh, an Osama or a Fulani man any, any longer, or a Benin man to plan, uh, plan against an Idoma, Idoma man, because uh, they have moved, they have seen each other, they have iterated, they have common aspiration. That of the, nation, the nationhood is more in their mind than uh, the sessional interest. And so this has been able to keep Nigeria going. So NYC is a unifying factor. One thing again one has to look at, if I'm a military general, why should I throw a bomb in uh, Sokoto when I know some of my children are there serving, doing their NYC? In fact, no child throws stones to any market when he knows he or his father or his mother is there, or even his children are there. If the children are there, he will not throw stone. So these are the these are the things, these are the benefits that NYC is uh, is giving in terms of national integration, cohesion, and so on. Nowadays, jobs are not there as it was in our time. In our time, before you graduate, you know that. Uh, one company or the other, one minister or the other is uh, ready to absorb you. And the type of car you ride is your social symbol. If you're on level seven, you ride on Beetle car. You are on uh, level eight, you ride on uh, Pojot. You are on level nine, you ride on 504 Pojot. So it was very clear. You don't even need to tell somebody the, your rank in the ministry before you can be identified. But all those seems gone. Then, uh, a young graduate who has completed this course, granted that we got willing within four or five years, or a doctor completes his course in seven years, he should be able to get something to rely on. He does not need to finish his uh, university or polytechnic and start looking at the mother's pot before he can feed. So the NYC look at it that it is advisable that this uh, type of skin should come up this sort of, a sort of a, a skill acquisition uh, training should come up so that they can become 
self-dependent are not only becoming self-independent, they should be able to teach others and employ others. So that uh, once you pass through university, you pass through the NYC, then you should not uh, become uh, a job seeker, you should be a job giver. So that is the purpose. The National Youth Service Corps, a call to service, a call to nationhood. Nigerian youths, stand up and embrace this clarion call. Wherever you are posted, accept it, embrace it. Do not harbor any fears because your security is assured. Develop common ties with members of your host communities. You would discover that North, South, East and West we are all brothers with common ties and a shared destiny as one nation. Do not lobby for preferential posting, for it is unpatriotic and illegal. Report at once to the orientation camp as soon as you are posted and contribute your quarter to the overall development of our great nation, Nigeria. The National Youth Service Corps, building future leaders. Welcome back. Community Development Service is one of the cardinal programs of the NYSC. CDS has revolutionized communities, especially rural communities, in the areas of education, healthcare, sanitation, poverty alleviation, agriculture, infrastructure, social amenities, to name a few. Community Development Service doesn't necessarily eradicate problems. It reduces problems and increases opportunities for growth. Such was the contribution of Okpe Oluwa Ridwan's Community Development Service Project in Inspector Quarters, Ogida Barracks, Benin City, Edo State. Ridwan, an ex core member who served in Edo State back in 2009, identified water shortage of the people of the community and mobilized human and financial resources to build a borehole for the people. Eleven years after, the impact of the borehole remains relevant and the people ever grateful for the intervention of Peolua through the NYSC CDS program. Come with us. My name is Udemizu Onyeche. I'm from Inspector Quarters, Ogida Barracks. This borehole was sung by Opwe Ridwan, 2009. When he came, he was a copper, so he knew we were suffering from water. So he had to volunteer to dig the borehole for us. So ever since then, we've been going through the stress of, we've not been going through the stress of digging borehole and all that. And ever since then, they've been pumping the water in our house. I've not been having any issue about no water or anything. And when there's no light, the barracks will contribute this morning. Then they'll buy fuel in our gen. We use a personal gen to pump the water for them. So that's how we'll be using the water and the borehole. The maintenance has been coming from the barracks also. He has inspired me because he brought water to this place. And now I know he will be rewarded for this great act. And so he has given everyone or anybody around or any youth around if you go anywhere, we're able to do something to be recognized. Okwele Ridwan is a very nice doctor. He works in the barracks also. He helps treat other children when they are sick. He really goes around the houses of everybody to check around people. I had people when I, before, I know they decide you, I did the former block. As then, with the suffer, not be small. Now from outside barrel, we'll go, go fetch water. No be small, suffer. Before you go fetch one, you don't tire. But as you come, you meet us, say they suffer. You can't dig the borehole for us. It help us well, well. Now, would they enjoy the water? Would they enjoy the water? Any problem will happen with the water, would they do one? Would they repair her? Every day, like me now, every day I they pray for him. Now, God go bless her. God go open way for her. Anything where they find for this life, God go give her what they find for this life. Anywhere he is, may God protect him, guide him. I'm seeing it through, so that the Lord will also give him long life and prosperity. So he yeah, always they take care of like do fatigue sometimes, like the other gods are always doing it to maintain how to maintain the environment.
That's amazing. It's so beautiful to see. Well done to you core members out there. We move on to the story of Mrs. Loveth Oluchuku, the CEO of Lovely Garments World. She served in Mobi in Adamawa State back in 2009 and decided to become an employer of labor. Since then, Loveth has fully established her garment factory and has trained over 1,000 core members as an NYSC SAGE trainer since 2017. Come with us. Uh, Mrs. Lovett Onuchuku. I am the CEO of Lovely Garment World. I did my service 2009 at Adamawa State, precisely Mubi, that is where I serve. But where I was in camp with, we talked about job creation. And after working for some establishment and found out how demanding it is for one to work for another person with a little pay, I made up my mind to establish a business of mine. So I went ahead to learn a skill. I found out that everything lies on skill. I learned a skill because I found out that with skill, I can make it. And since then, I joined NYC 2017. And since 2017, I've trained a lot of core members and they are doing well all over Nigeria. I contact them, they are doing well. And from like, if I'm to say the number of core members I've produced, they are numerous. The, of, over 1,000 core members have passed through this skill, both uh, off camp and uh, in camp. They have passed through this skill, and I'm in contact with many of them, and they are virtually doing well. Lovely Garment World is a home of all kinds of knitted wears. Before we believe that a knitted wear will be gotten maybe in OK. But I came and I looked into it and I found out that our made in Nigerian wool can equally be used to produce those things we buy in abroad. And in this lovely garment world, we have varieties of knitted wear. That is where we use wool, just like a packet of wool. This is just a packet of wool, a rope like this. We turn it into knitted wears, like what I'm seeing. Chisova, please, can I have uh, your clothes? Vera, please, can I see you? Like this, a knitted wear made by Chisoba, a core member that is training under this establishment. Like the pullover in her hand, equally made by her, training here. Like what this, my lovely sister is putting on, core member is putting on this gown. She made it here in lovely garment. It's a home where we transform ropes wool like you can see to make a unique and a uh, uh, cute gown my clients are school like you can see this is a school production this is a cardigan for school where we make cardigan for both a uh, private school and all part, uh, private school public school from nursery school and secondary school we probably have uh, pullovers, like what she have there. We make pullovers for even those of them in tertiary institutions that want to, they want to swag us and they want to wear something unique. We make pullovers for them. And we probably produce traditional caps. My name is Ukemo Bong Isido Omo. I am from Akwaibom State. I am a core member of Batch C. I entered camp about 5th November and there was this Said program they did and they were display of various skills ranging from tailoring, knitting, um, shoemaking and a whole lot of paint making and a whole lot of other things. But what got my attention was using wool to make various knitted wears. And it was Mrs. Lovelyn that was the CEO of Lovely Knitted Wears. So I was attracted to the way wool was used. 
something different from the random cardigans we see in the market. That's why I went to her. I told her I would like to learn. So because of the SAI training in camp, I was able to locate her. And I'm here now. I'm making a cardigan. This is the front part of it. I'm working on the back part. I feel elated that I have something I will cling on to. Apart from, of course, Halloween is ending very soon. So I have something. Already, this is someone's job. And this is the third time I'll be doing a particular job on knitting for the same person. So it's something that I'm not afraid I will be looking for a job. I have something that is still paying me apart from the Alawi. This knitting has actually, like, it has, it has given me this, this joy that at the end of the day, after my old service and everything, I don't have to go extra miles searching for jobs and stuff because it really pays well and it's very, very nice. Like, the fact that I can even use wool to create lots of stuff, like, it's very amazing because literally there is nothing that cannot be created with, without the wool. And uh, yes, I want to say a very big thank you to NYSC for giving me this opportunity because it was through NYSC I got to learn this skill and I just want to say a big thank you to them. I will advise my core members like I used to tell them. I used to tell them that the world we are, we are into is no longer a world that you'll be looking for white collar job. Right now is job, is skill acquisition that is the key to success. Education is only key for you to have knowledge or to acquire a particular skill that will help you to succeed. For anyone to succeed, now you have to have a skill. A skill is the power. So that is why you have come in these lovely garments that you acquire a skill that will help you to establish your own establishment, just like lovely garments today. And you to put food on your table, you not move around and be looking for white collar job because it's a place to be. So you have come to the right skill. And I encourage you, put in your best as once you drop your khaki and move into the street, like the core members I have all over Nigeria, they are calling me. They are having a lot of contracts and they are doing well. I love to see economic prosperity. And that is one of the core objectives of the Director General, Brigadier General Shaibu Ibrahim, to see core members self-reliant and wealth creators. That is the reason for the continued support and expansion of the NYSC SAID program. Now, let's go to the heartwarming story of Chinedu Ezewon Kike an indigenous of Anambra State and a graduate of Nnamdi Azikiwe University, Oka. He was posted to Oyo State for his service here in 2007 and has remained in the state. He has established a thriving artwork production company, Don't See Productions, and has built a robust clientele for his business. He has a beautiful young family and has integrated beautifully into the community. Let's meet him. My name is Chinedu Ezenwokike. I am from Anambra State, precisely I go in Anambra State. I finished from I finished from Nanda's Kiwe University, Oka. I read fine and applied arts. Yeah. And this is my lovely wife. I'm Mrs. Mary Jane, is a I served in 2007-2008, batch A, precisely. NYC brought me to Ohio State, and since then, I think I'm enjoying whatever I'm getting here, because I'm settled here, I got married here, I live my life here, everything, I do everything here, I have my business here, we are into uh, uh, all artworks, we customize shirts, we make greeting cards for prominent people in the country. Governors, name them and all that. Here in Oyo State is very calm, peaceful and all that. So, but when I came here, 
honestly, I must confess, when I came, I decided to go back to my state. That was before I got married anyway. So, but then after some time, I decided, ah, why going back? Let me just establish here and continue life like that. And honestly, it paid because I know where I am today. I know where, where I started from then and today. We've trained so many core members, which we have like outstanding ones now. They are doing very well. When I mean very well, they are almost doing the same, almost the same thing with me, you know. So I think more of Don't See production is just about that. I know so uh, two core members that do his work on their own. They have established themselves based on what he taught them and they are doing fine. They are also in, one is in Ibadan here, one is in Abuja. The Sayyid is okay, it's important. When I saw two, I also did mine, but I was not opportune to meet his own uh, kind of uh, uh, skill acquisition. I did meet him, but his own is very okay. People that did it up to date, they are calling him, they are doing well. In terms of uh, integration, I think um, it's better for one more because if I, I could remember the time I wanted to come to Oyo State when I got my letter, my dad, though late, the blessed memory, he said something. He said, Can you cope with the Yorubas? He said that. I said, I can cope with anybody. Let me go there first. Because he was like, if there's a way we can do this so that you come back to the east, if possible, to uh, rivers or something. I said, no, since I've gotten this, let me go there. It's not about uh, you are from the east or you're from... After all, most of my workers are Yorubas. Most majority of them are Yorubas. And the place I'm living, we live with Yorubas. I think we are the only Igbos there. And we, 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 we are living together peacefully without any issue. So I use this opportunity to, you know, to tell, tell my fellow Nigerians that it's not about tribe. It's not about tribe. We don't need to be tribalistic before you live in a place. You and as an Igbo man, you are just a human being. A Yoruba man is just a human being. If we understand from that angle, I don't think we will have issues about tribe, tribes and all that in the country. So. But then, and thank God today, where I'm staying is owned by a Yoruba man too. And the, the agent that gave me the place is a Yoruba man too. When an Igbo man comes to a, 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 a Yoruba land, you are meeting Yoruba people. An Igbo man goes to, uh, uh, sorry, a Yoruba man goes to uh, uh, Igbo land, you are meeting an Igbo man or Igbo uh, person there. So you find out that the whole thing is coming together like you are coming to this place whosoever you're meeting you must stay with that person that integration must be there and you can't change it you cannot even force it to even separate it the integration must be there so i think nyc has helped in a very large way in integrating the nation That was so warm and beautiful. Most times, we assume that we need to stay in our places of comfort or perhaps where we know people to make it. But we have seen from the numerous stories of core members, both serving and past, that stepping out of your comfort zone is the fertile ground we need for growth. Thank you for investing your time with us on today's episode of NYSE Half Hour. We would love to hear from you. Please write to us on the online handles displayed on your screens right now, and we would write back. Remember, the safety of core members in our communities is the responsibility of you and I. Until I see you next time, I am Inkem Okwago. Stay safe.
The management of the National Youth Service Corps wishes to inform the general public that any person who, not being a person serving in the service corps or duly authorized so to do, wears the uniform or any part of the uniform of the service corps is guilty of an offense and liable on conviction to a fine or to imprisonment for a term of six months or to both such fine and imprisonment. Thank you.